Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about hypercalcemia. I know this is a subject that you've been waiting for for a long time, so I'm going to try not to disappoint you. These people usually present with our mnemonic stones, bones, groans, thrones, psychiatric overtones, and I'm going to add on here also these are shown on EKG. I know it's a little bit of a stretch, but bear with me. Stones uh, that could be renal or biliary. Just think about what calcium does. Uh, we know that you get calcium in both renal and biliary stones. We know that bones are made of calcium, so uh, you can just picture uh, pulling all the calcium out of the bone would probably hurt. And um, I'm sure that's not how it works, but picture that way anyway. Groans abdominal pain, uh, nausea, vomiting, ulcers. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but uh, calcium uh, increases gastrin release, and so if you get a, too much gastrin, you can imagine some GI symptoms. Uh, thrones, uh, you're sitting on the throne, polyuria, psychiatric overtones, um, depression, anxiety, uh, all the way to coma uh, and everything in between. And the major things that you see on EKG are short QT, uh, wide T, uh, T waves, and arrhythmias. So why would we have too much calcium? Well, we don't make calcium, so we're either going to be taking too much in or not excreting too much. So let's start with taking too much in. Uh, too much calcium intake is uh, now, again, the third most common cause of hypercalcemia. It was uh, originally a, a common cause, and uh, we, we went away from using it as much, uh, but now we're, we're using calcium more, and uh, so it's, it's become, again, the third most common cause. Uh, the two major hormones or uh, enzymes that increase calcium are PTH and vitamin D and PTH also increases vitamin D so why would you have increased PTH well uh, you could have a tumor that secretes PTH a parathyroid tumor or um, you could just have any other form of primary par hyperparathyroidism or you could also have uh, something like PTH, which is the PTH-related protein, which is made by various cancers. Vitamin D. Why would you have too much vitamin D? Well, you might be taking too much in, or you might be making too much because you have sarcoidosis. And excretion. Why would you not be excreting enough calcium? You might have problems with your kidneys, and you might be taking a thiazide diuretic. There's other diuretics that will do it too, or other uh, uh, drugs that will do it, and we'll talk about those in a second. So the main two causes are primary hyperparathyroidism and malignancy. So usually what we're going to be doing is trying to figure out which one of these it is. And then if it's not one of these, then we'll move on to some others. So usually you see uh, primary hyperparathyroidism in the outpatient setting. Uh, it's less symptomatic, and so it kind of creeps up on you. The levels are going to be lower than in malignancy. Uh, a lot of our hospitalized patients uh, are hospitalized secondary to malignancy, and you'll see the higher calcium levels. You'll see more symptoms. So... Um, does this matter? Not a whole lot because we're going to be working it up the same way anyway. Some other causes that we mentioned. We mentioned milk alkali. We're using it more um, for osteoporosis. We're using more calcium for osteoporosis. And there's also just more commercially available supplements. And that's a big reason why we're getting more of it. And calcium carbonate is also being treated, uh, used for treating secondary hyperparathyroidism and uh, of course you have your familial causes like MEN1 and MEN2A uh, familial hypocalciuric uh, hypercalcemia we'll try and do uh, we'll try and do another video just on some of these other causes malignancy 
there's three main reasons why malignancy will cause uh, hypercalcemia. One is the PTH-related protein that we were talking about. Another is uh, extra renal 1-alpha uh, hydroxylase activation. This is the hormone uh, or the enzyme that uh, activates vitamin D. So you can get this in malignancy and you can also get it in uh, chronic granulomatous disorder like sarcoidosis. Then osteolytic bone metastases are also going to free up calcium from the bone and cause hypercalcemia. So there's a few different ways malignancy can affect your calcium. Medications we mentioned, thiazides. Uh, there's also uh, lithium, teriparatide, uh, vitamin A, theophylline. And some other causes are uh, hyperthyroidism, acromegaly, pheochromocytoma, adrenal insufficiency, and parenteral nutrition. So how do we diagnose this? Well, our major labs are, of course, going to be our calcium levels. That's where we're going to find most of these. Uh, most of these are not going to present with symptoms that we then chase down and find the, calci the hypercalcemia. A lot of these we're just going to find on routine labs. So after we find out that they have hypercalcemia, then all these people are going to get a PTH, even the people that have a known malignancy. And uh, the reason for that is because uh, there is also an increase of primary hyperparathyroidism with malignancy as well. So everybody gets the PTH and um, then albumin to help us make sure that we know this is a real hypercalcemia. So remember the conversion to uh, make sure it's not pseudo hypercalcemia is to take the serum calcium plus 0.8 times the difference in normal albumin versus the patient albumin. So um, if your serum calcium level is, uh, let's say, 10, and your uh, patient's albumin level is 6, then um, that would be uh, 10 uh, plus 0.8 times uh, 4 minus 6, which would be uh, 1.6. So basically, it, basically it would be 10 minus 1.6, that would be 8.4. And uh, we can also measure free calcium in some facilities. So if that's available, uh, you can do that instead of this uh, albumin correction. And if you have low PTH, then you're going to measure the PTH-related protein and then vitamin D um, and urinary calcium, chest x-ray, protein electrophoresis, and bone x-rays. Those are kind of all down the line. We'll talk about the algorithm here in a second. So hypercalcemia. Um, we have, uh, if we have high PTH, then we're going to check the urine calcium. If the urine calcium is high, then it's going to be uh, primary hyperparathyroidism. If the urine calcium is low, then we think of uh, familial hypocaluric uh, hypo hypercalcemia. Then if we have lower PTH, then we check our uh, PTH-related protein, um, which if it's high, then we got uh, a malignancy issue. Then we'll also check our vitamin D. If that's high, we're going to want to get a chest x-ray uh, to rule out sarcoidosis. Um, also, we're going to check for meds if they've got high vitamin D. And then if those are normal, if your PTH and your vitamin D, or your PTHRP and your vitamin D are normal, then we got to think about other causes like uh, hyperthyroidism, uh, vitamin A toxicity, um, and multiple myeloma. So you've got to do your uh, electric serum protein electrophoresis and I had milk alkali af off to the side because it doesn't necessarily fit in the algorithm here it's more of a clinical diagnosis you got to get it from the history so treatment we don't need to treat everybody if they're symptomatic then then uh, 
depending on how bad the symptoms are, we're going to want to treat them. Also, if the calcium just gets above 14, we start to worry, so we, we treat them then. The main treatments are fluids because a lot of these people will be dehydrated due to vomiting or renal problems. We give them sodium, uh, and uh, I won't get into the mechanism there. Uh, diuretics like uh, loop diuretics especially, which uh, remember loops lose calcium. And while you're treating it, watch your uh, potassium and your magnesium levels because we're messing with their fluid status. So th thanks for watching. If you want to get involved in this project, go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer. We could use all the help we can get. Um, and please help us make these videos better by letting us know what we missed in this one. And uh, also you can give us suggestions of uh, some topics that you want us to cover. Thanks.